Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so a couple months ago now, I bought one of my dream cars, a 1980s diesel Mercedes for $3,000. And now today, I'm going to be giving you all a full tour of it, along with taking it for a little bit of a drive as well, which I will admit I am quite excited to do. But first off, I should probably talk about what this car actually is, how many miles are on it, how much I paid for it, how I got it, etc. And then after that, I should probably talk about why it's actually one of my dream cars before I go ahead and hop into the tour of, well, this car right here. First off, as said, let's go and talk about what this car actually is. So what is this car? Well, it is a 1985 Mercedes-Benz W123 300D turbo diesel sedan made in the last year of the W123 generation. It is a USDM market example, as we can see by the US only headlights and by the US only big bumpers. It's got a classical white exterior and a Palmetto MB Tex interior, and it currently has 285,000 miles on the odometer. Probably more than that though, if I had to guess, because the odometer broke a couple months ago as I was driving the car. So it's probably now got 290,000 miles on it, roughly, if I had to guess. But nonetheless, even though that might seem like pretty high mileage, in my personal opinion at least, it's just getting broken in, you know what I'm saying? It's just getting broken in. Because W123 diesel Mercedes are known to go above and beyond 500,000 miles, all the way up until a million miles, sometimes at least. I've seen examples with over a million miles on them, which is pretty crazy if I do say so myself. And so as such, with only almost 300,000 miles on this car, I'd have to say that it's just getting broken in. However, 300,000 miles is still nothing to scoff at. And this car is also over 40 years old now, I wanna say. And so as such, it does have some quirks and features due to the mileage and age, which I'll be covering throughout this video. But why is this car right here one of my dream cars? Well, it's pretty simple in all honesty. When I was a kid, my parents drove W123s all the time. My dad's a really big fan of this generation of Mercedes, specifically of the 300D. And because I drove around with my parents in these cars or uh, cars similar to this one so much, I just grew to have a fondness for them. And for the last couple years or so, I have really, 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 really wanted one of these. I love the reliability they provide. I love the classical yet still very 1980s styling. I love that it's a diesel. I love the bunt cake rims. I love the lights. I love the bumpers. I love just about everything about this car right here. I even love that it's slow because this car only has like 125 horsepower and more torque than that because it's diesel. But over the years, I suspect it's probably lost a little bit of its horsepower, so it's probably right around 100 horsepower right now, if I had to guess. Haven't had a dynoed or anything like that kind of thing. Not that there's really much point in all honesty, but, but this car is slow as hell, let me tell y'all what. But honestly, I even love that. I even love that it's so slow because it just makes me take a step back and just kind of chill out while I'm driving. I'm not in a rush to get anywhere kind of thing. I'm just chilling in my luxury car going 45 and a 45 doing the exact speed limit with people honking behind me, just trying to ruin the vibe and everything like that kind of thing. Let me tell y'all what. But you know, this car right here is one of my dream cars just simply because it's what I rode around in when I was a kid and just simply because it's what I just experienced uh, so much of when I was a kid. This car, or well, not this specific car, but the W123 Mercedes were my intro to the car world. And this, this style of car right here, this generation of car right here, will always hold a special place in my heart. And it certainly does today. And I'm just so glad to 
own one that is for sure it's something i've wanted for the last couple years now um and i've specifically wanted one of the sedans because when i was a kid my parents both drove w123 300ds uh, my mom drove a blue uh, 300d sedan with like 400,000 miles on the odometer my dad drove a um beige uh, w123 station wagon with there's an alarm going off over there. I'm not exactly sure what's going on in all honesty. And now it's gone away. That just completely distracted me. Uh, what, is, what, what did my dad drive when I was a kid again? <laughs> what did my dad drive when I was a kid again? Um, he drove a beige um, W123 station wagon. Uh, both of which I absolutely adored when I was a kid. But sadly, uh, when I was like 12 or 13, the blue uh, w123 sedan that my mom drove acquired some issues my parents couldn't afford to fix those issues at the time and they weren't something that my dad could uh handle himself and so as such the car ended up getting junked my dad still owns the uh, station wagon uh because it's very much his dream car but I'd have to say that the sedan W123 in specific is my dream car uh, just simply because it's what I grew up with and then my parents got rid of it because it had to get junked in. My dad already has a station wagon. I, I, I'm good with the sedan kind of thing. I personally like the styling a little bit more than the station wagon. The station wagon, don't get me wrong, looks amazing as well. But of the uh, different W123s that were available with the uh, 300D turbo diesel, the uh, coupe the sedan and the station wagon i definitely love the station wagon the most and this is pretty much my exact spec of dream car i will admit i would have loved it a little bit more if it was blue like 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 my mom's uh like, like my mom's uh 300d uh sedan that she drove when i was a kid that would have been cool kind of thing but it's got the same exact interior it's got the same exact interior it's got the palmetto interior which is my favorite interior on these cars so i really i really have no room to complain especially since i only paid three thousand dollars for this car i got it off a of facebook marketplace i uh, was browsing facebook marketplace specifically for uh 300ds after my uh, last car crapped out on me i had a 1999 camry for context after that car crapped out on me because it had some structural issues i started looking at 300ds i was like well i need a new car i need a reliable car and i need one that's just going to get me from a to b not quickly it's just going to get me from a to b kind of thing 300d will work perfectly for that while doing it very 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 well and very 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 comfy and looking good while it's doing that as well kind of thing so i started specifically looking for 300ds on facebook marketplace and after about five or six days one popped up and it was this one right here and I looked at the mileage, I was like, okay, not too high of mileage, it's $3,000, it's about two and a half hours away in Richmond, Virginia, there's a, some minor exterior issues, but as long as it's mechanically sound, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. And so as such, I went ahead and messaged the uh, seller, and I said, hey, I'm interested, can you just take some more photos, send them over to me when you have a chance kind of thing, and he did, and he did exactly that, the photos confirmed what i was thinking they confirmed that some of the parts in the car are new they confirmed that the car had been taken care of and everything like that kind of thing and they confirmed that the car did not have insane structural rust as well and so as such i went ahead and organized a uh, a meet with that guy and um i went and saw the car a couple days later and i had cash in hand i was intending on buying it right then two and a half hours away i couldn't go back home and then come back to buy it that is for sure so i had cash in hand right there kind of thing ready to buy it tried to talk him down to 2500 bucks he wasn't willing to budge so i went ahead and just gave him the full three grand that he was asking for and honestly even even though i paid the full three grand he was asking for i still feel like i got a pretty good deal this car has mechanical records going all the way back to uh, before i was born all the way back to the early 90s in fact and it is in fantastic mechanical condition it's been worked on at mercedes uh, specific mechanics and mercedes dealerships its entire lifespan so i certainly cannot complain about that that is for sure and there is uh, very 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 little rust on the car as well and the rust that is on the car is just rust that is just kind of known to appear in those particular spots on w123s and there's only a couple minor issues with the exterior and interior i certainly have no complaints on my behalf that is for sure now that i've covered everything i think i wanted to say for the intro though 
I do suppose now I should probably go ahead and give you guys a tour of the exterior. Now, shouldn't I? So let's go ahead and start off with the front of the car now. And of course, we can see the car. Oh, 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 man, it's looking amazing. Come on, look at that. It's looking amazing. Looks absolutely beautiful. We can see the paint is in a pretty good condition. It's a uh, pretty shiny right here and then kind of more dull over here definitely needs a buff and a wax and definitely needs a wash as well i literally have not washed this car since i bought it i will admit but nonetheless the paint is still in better condition than not we can see the uh, mercedes emblem right here which doesn't even move just a little bit certainly no complaints on my behalf that is for sure looks fantastic when you're driving down the road behind the wheel we can see another mercedes logo right here and of course the iconic w123 grill right here as well missing one fin sadly i am planning on getting a um what's it called a uh a mileage indicator to put on the grill as uh, Mercedes offers like mileage indicators for W123s and W124s and some of their other cars as well that you can put on the grill to indicate, oh, I have 285, I have uh, not 285,000 miles, but I, I, like the car has, I'm getting more jumbled up, but you can get like a, a mileage indicator to indicate that you have like over 250,000 miles or over a certain amount of kilometers and stuff like that kind of thing as well. And uh, I do plan on getting one of those for the, uh, for, for the, uh, for the grill i'm gonna just stick it in there kind of thing and maybe cover this up because there is a fin missing and everything like that kind of thing so maybe try to cover it up with the uh, mileage with the mileage flexor i will admit certainly no complaints on my behalf though it is still looking much better than not of course usdm headlights this is a usdm car after all and then of course usdm bumper as well this is a usdm car after all i know a lot of people out there they don't like the usdm headlights and bumpers they think the euro headlights and bumpers look a lot better i'll be frank i grew up with the usdm headlights and bumpers and honestly i prefer them that's a very 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 controversial take that's probably the most controversial thing i'll say in the entirety of this video today but you know i do prefer the big us bumper and the usa headlights i will admit certainly no complaints on my behalf the front of the car though looking pretty good if i do say so myself got some like wear or like paint or something on like this area right here. I'm not exactly sure in all honesty. And there is a little bit rust on the underside and there's the um, like glow plug sort of um, wire so you can have it so you can have it plugged in at night. So the glow plugs are already heated up and everything like that when it gets cold out. You definitely want that in like 30 degree weather that is for sure. But we can see the uh, area right here, the little, um, this is not like a, a splitter or something like that kind of thing, but it's just like a little underpiece to the bumper. It does have a little bit of rust on it, but nothing too major, you know what I'm saying? Just surface rust. Certainly no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. And that's pretty much all there is to the front. Pretty good condition. Moving on to this side, it's in a little bit worse of condition. We can see the trim all the way down here until this door. And the driver's side door has a pretty big dent in it because the previous owner was backing out of his garage so the car is backing up and uh the door got caught on the uh on the garage door and so it started bending it back just like that kind of thing started bending it back and as we can see this all got pushed in just like that kind of thing and the trim popped off and well now i've got a door to replace well it actually wasn't the previous owner it was the owner before the previous owner the owner that the previous owner bought the car from did that i do suppose but um, yeah, the door either needs to be replaced or it just needs to be bent out or something like that kind of thing. I'm thinking I might just replace it, but if it's uh, significantly cheaper to, to uh, simply just uh, try to bend it out and everything like that kind of thing, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go with the cheapest option in all honesty and just take the, um, the door uh, like interior uh, trim uh, from this door and then put it on the new door as well kind of thing. That's my goal at least, but finding a classical white W123 is a little bit harder than not. It wasn't a super uncommon color by any means, but definitely not a super common color either. But we can see this door right here, perfectly fine, you know what I'm saying? Certainly no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. Trim looking good, you know what I'm saying? Door handles looking good, certainly no complaints on my behalf. Moving on to the wheel right here and the wheel over there. We can see they're both bunt cake rims, looking fantastic. I love the bunt cake rims. I love how they look. They look fantastic. Next to the rim though, we can see some of the rust the car has. This rust is uh, not super bad, but it definitely does need to be cut out and then a new piece needs to be welded in or something like that kind of thing. There's a pretty big bubble right there and a bunch of rust appearing through the surface right here, but it's nothing too major. It's nothing structural and there's no rust on the inside of the wheel well other than right here. This is a pretty common place 
for rust to appear on W123, so it's really not a big deal in my personal opinion. There's also a little bit of rust on the uh, bottom right here as well, but not too big of a deal in all honesty. Certainly no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. And one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, the transmission in this car is currently leaking as well. Other than that, mechanically it's very sound, but the transmission is leaking. It does need some other work done to it. I need to get the um, brake, uh, the, the brake fluid repressurized. I need to replace the brakes. But the major issue at this moment in time is the uh, transmission fluid leaking out of it. There is a cord. Let's see if I can just point at it. There's a cord right there. I don't know. There is a little bit of a drip on it kind of thing. If you guys can see that drip right above where my finger is, that is where it's leaking. I need to get the uh, car on a stand and uh, just replace that cord essentially. Hopefully that'll be the, uh, hopefully that'll be, uh, hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll, Hopefully that'll be the only part of the issue I need to fix. Let me just put it that way kind of thing. But you know, the transmission is leaking a little bit right now, but that's why I have transmission fluid in my trunk. Moving on to the rear of the car that we can see looks absolutely fantastic. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. That is for sure. Definitely a very good looking rear end, a little bit dummy thick as well. If you ask me, got my license plate covered up, of course, just says 300D turbo diesel right there with the Mercedes logo looking iconic in the center right there as well taillights looking fantastic love me you know what i'm saying and rear bumper looking pretty good as well not falling off i remember when i was a kid my mom's uh, 300d um had the bumper get knocked off before once um we were parked downtown getting lunch or something like that i can think i can't remember what we, were, what we were doing i was probably like nine or ten we were getting lunch like downtown in the city i live in and um come back to the car it was street parked and somebody we were pretty sure had very lightly knocked the rear end and the bumper was just on the ground. It had just fallen off kind of thing. This bumper, definitely not going to fall off. That is for sure. So certainly no complaints on my behalf, but it's one of like the main experiences I remember about the W123 is the bumper as the bumper fell off. Too funny, I ain't gonna lie. Too funny. Behind the bumper though, there is a little bit of rust. As we can see, there is a little bit of rust, but nothing that a little bit of fix can't be applied to that is for sure but definitely got to take the bumper off or i do suppose i could just take a look underneath which i've already done but i do suppose i i probably want to take the bumper off anyway and just take a look at how bad that really is and uh, see if uh when this rust and the other rust i pointed at is repaired i can also get the rust back here repaired as well but i mean like it's a like 40 year old <laughs> it's a 40 year old tank with uh, like 290, almost almost 300,000 miles on it. So a little bit of rust, it ain't gonna stop it, that is for sure. And for the amount of rust this car has on it, um, it's not, or for the, for the amount of miles this car has on it and for the age of it, the amount of rust this car has is nothing in all honesty. There is a little bit of more, there is a little bit more rust on this side as well though. I will admit this side does have a little bit more rust like right here along with right here as well. This is some of the worst rust on the car. I definitely have to say, especially since it hits on the trim as well, but really no biggie, you know what I'm saying? Really no biggie. But this very much is, besides that rust, the pretty side of the car. This very much is the pretty side of the car just simply because the door doesn't have a massive dent in it. Bunt cake rims, of course, and uh, looking fantastic. The fuel door opens just like that. We can see I have the uh, original Mercedes diesel cap from what I know, and the original stickers on the inside of the door as well. Uh, certainly no complaints on my behalf. We can also see there are some very, very, very small little dents on the trunk on either side from this right here. I think somebody opened it a little bit too fast and uh, <laughs> got jammed into the uh, actual car itself. I don't know how the hell they did that. I opened the trunk really fast and I can never manage to, to do that, but somehow they did that. Somehow they did that. I don't know how. But you know, that is what the car looks like as a whole. Taking a look at the roof. Of course, this car has a sunroof as well. The sunroof does work, but it does leak just a little bit. I will admit that's okay though. That's okay. It ain't no biggie. The car as a whole leaks a little bit as well besides just the sunroof, but it's okay. It's perfectly fine. It ain't no biggie. You know what I'm saying? It's an old car and um, I'm not worried about it leaking just a little bit. It's not pouring on me or anything like that kind of thing. The rain isn't pouring on me. It's leaking just a little bit, so it really ain't no biggie, you know what I'm saying? There are some other scuffs and stuff like that on the car, like right here, there's some other scuffs 
right here is like a little bit paint scuff or something like that. Maybe they tried to repaint this area of the car and didn't take the bumper off for some reason or something like that kind of thing. Not exactly sure, but really it's all minor things in all honesty. I'm really not terribly worried about it. There's no structural damage. There's no major rust and the mechanical records are fantastic. So I really cannot complain that is for sure. Just taking a look at the underneath of the car from here, we can see the exhaust pipe, the uh, spare tire area. I do have a spare bunt cake. And uh, just taking a look at the uh, under uh, underneath of the car from the front, we can see overall, yeah, not, not really much rust at all. If anything, it's just surface rust, but really, in all honesty, really no rust at all. This car, I can't complain. I can't complain for the mileage it has and for three grand. Oh, I can't complain, y'all. I can't complain, as I'm sure is obvious. I am very, very, very hype about this car. I love it. The, the, the excitement I first had when I bought this, like, earlier this year, has not worn off at all. Like, I thought, like, I no joke. I still, every single time I park, I still turn around and look at this car. Every single time I'm walking away, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm walking away. Oh, uh, let's just take a look at my car real quick. Every single time, every single time. And like half those times, I take a photo of the car. I have like 500 photos of my car just parked in random spots. I love it. I, I'm such a fan. The excitement I first had when I bought this car has not worn off at all over the last couple months. And I'm so happy with it even with the very minor issues it has. And the very minor issues, honestly, they just add personality and charm to the car. I really do not mind them at all. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for the exterior though. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do one more quick walk around. And then after that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and open the trunk, show you guys what the trunk looks like. And then after that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the interior and actually show you guys what the interior of this car looks like. I'm not showing you all my keys though. I'm not having any of y'all make my key and then break into my car, that's not happening. So let's go and just open it, there we go. Just like that kind of thing. Go ahead and put my keys back in my pocket where they go. And now let's go ahead and open the trunk up just like that and we can see the uh, light actually does work. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. I have a Chrysler 300 grill back here because I found it on the side of the road and I said, well, I'll take it. Got a skateboard back here. Got a bunch of trash back here. Got an empty thing, a jumper cable pack, whatever thing. I got some jumper cables right here. I had two jumper cables and now I have one. And then, well, I have, I have, I had two sets of jumper cables and now I have one set of jumper cables to say it correctly. I have an like a half empty 48 pack of water, a jack, just in case you never know, tool bag, extra air filter for the uh, engine. And I have a bunch of uh, transmission fluid for the leaking transmission and a funnel for the uh, transmission fluid as well. And the uh, piece of trim right here that is meant to go on the uh, driver's side door. Overall, the, uh, the trunk is in pretty good condition. Not that y'all can really see much of it. Y'all are just gonna have to trust me on this, that uh, under this carpet right here, there is indeed another bunt cake rim, a spare rim, not, not a, um, a donut. It's not a miniature rim or anything like that kind of thing. It is a full size spare which is the best kind of spare, if you ask me kind of thing. But uh, yeah, that's what the trunk looks like. That's uh, what I keep in my trunk. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. Let's go ahead and close that up, just like that kind of thing. And let's go ahead. And I think before I hop into the driver's seat, actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the seat back here. Excuse me, just burped a little bit. I think I'm gonna go and hop into the seat back here. And I'm just gonna show y'all how much legroom I have. I gotta move my little guy over just a little bit kind of thing. This is my little car's mascot. And we can see the car also came with the original first aid kit that has been updated over the years. However, the um, lid on the box disintegrated, which is pretty common in these cars. The sun just keeps hitting the cover and it disintegrates and it disintegrated. Um, so as I, was, as I was looking at this car, I asked the previous owner, I was like, hey, is the med kit still in there kind of thing? And he was like, oh, let me open it up and check. And then he, he opened it up and it just cracked right there. <laughs> he was like, oh no, I'm so sorry. And I was like, I'm not worried about it. It happens on every car. I've gone to the junkyard to pull parts off of one, two, threes with my dad before. And I'm like, oh, is the med kit still? And they all disintegrate in my hand. They all disintegrate in my hand. Let's go ahead and close up the door though. And I'd have to say, I mean, like I'm 6'1", the car, the, the car seat is set back a pretty decent amount right now, but it's still, it's not unbearable by any means kind of thing. I mean, like I can just put my legs like this, uh, man spread just a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And uh, 
I'm pretty comfy. I'm pretty comfy. I really ain't got no complaints on my behalf. That is for sure. Uh, the netting back here on this seat is in pretty good condition, but on the other seat, not so good condition. I don't think you really put anything in this netting in all honesty, but uh, yeah, looking pretty good if I do say so myself. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. In uh, interior from the back looks fantastic. Got my pack of Chung Wah's up there. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. And uh, over here looks pretty good. Got some what is this? This is some third-party speakers that were installed by either the previous owner or the owner before him. Not exactly sure in all honesty. This is one of the things that is missing from the mechanical records, but they do work perfectly fine. And let's go ahead and now just real quick move that stuff over and pull out the armrest. Oh, I got an armrest. I can't complain. That is for sure. Comfy as hell, y'all. Comfy as hell. I can't complain. Let's go ahead and see if I can remember to put this. See if I can remember how to put this back up. <laughs> Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, all right. Kind of just shove it. There we, ah, there we go. Put it back up. There we go. Much better. Let's go put my little guy right there. Yeah. How you doing, little guy? And let's go ahead and get back out of the car. There we go. Just like that. And oh, okay. Yep. Stepping out of the car with the car seat that back, it's a little bit difficult. The ashtrays in the back are empty. I have not used the ashtrays in this car yet, but looking in it, I do feel like I see a little bit of ash. So I'm feeling like this car might have been smoked in in the back of it specifically when i first bought this car i didn't see any ash in the front ashtray but i did see ash in the back so i'm not sure if this car has actually been smoked in if it has been smoked in. it's probably maybe was just smoked in the back i'm not sure in all honesty it's an old car i can't tell that is for sure and i have not found any cigarette butts from not me in this car i'm just going to close up that door though and let's go and just take a look at the uh passenger side we can see I have a bunch of stuff right here uh, ice scraper some microfiber towels and whatnot kind of thing got my water bottle right here this is the perfect holder for a water bottle and of course we can see the glove compartment right here the glove compartment uh, is one of those parts that it's very much okay you can tell it's been it's been worn quite a bit over the last uh, 300,000 miles that is for sure opening it it's uh leans down quite a bit we can see you can eat right here I remember when I was a kid sitting in the front seat with my dad we'd stop at like mcdonald's or chick-fil-a or something like that kind of thing and um and uh we'd get our food and i'd be i'd be in the passenger seat and be like yeah i got my drink i got my drink right here i got my chicken nuggets right here i got my sauce right here stuff like that kind of thing amazing eating platform that is for sure certainly no complaints on my behalf just got a bunch of receipts and the original owner's manual in here certainly no complaints on my behalf along with a crkt m uh, 1601 or 10ks actually not zero one KS one OKS. Let's go and see if I can close that over bumps. This likes to fly open, but it really ain't no biggie. I've gotten used to uh, being able to see bumps, which I think this is going to fly open. So I just kind of lean over from the steering wheel. I'm just kind of going like that kind of thing. But the rest of the interior, pretty good condition. Armrest, pretty good shape. Certainly can't complain. Just goes up like that, back down like that. The sunroof uh, does indeed work. So does the rear defrost. Kind of. It kind. It kind of works. It works not the greatest i will admit the light switch right here does work as we can see and the antenna does go up and down the radio does work but it is missing a knob but it does work i'll show that off once i get the car all started up the ac of course does not work this car originally came with ac it's uh, gone through i was looking at the mechanical records this car has gone through like four um ac compressors um three of them were in the span of like five years um I don't even know if I'm going to bother trying to get the AC to work in all honesty. I don't really care, to be frank. Um, the summers where I live, they're not fun, but I can deal with it kind of thing. But thankfully, the heat works really, really, really well, and all the climate controls work. The defrost and everything like that works really well, so I really cannot complain in all honesty. But let's go ahead and... Oh, one other thing. This is missing uh, the, 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 the thing right here. The lights do still work. The lights do still work. Where's my screwdriver? Oh, wrong screwdriver screwdriver oh wrong screwdriver again okay i think it'll work yeah the light does work i'm just gonna kind of stick in a screwdriver but it does work both sides are missing but both sides do work so certainly no complaints on my behalf that is for sure let's go ahead and now get out of my car once again and now i do suppose let's go ahead and i'm just gonna go and lock these real quick so i'm not getting back in this side and now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna hop in the driver's side, just show you guys the gauge cluster and everything like that kind of thing. All part of the full tour I'm giving you all in today's video. I'm doing a very, very, very full tour in today's video that is for sure. 
So I'm going to close the door now, and uh, I'm feeling pretty comfy. We can see the ashtray right here, gear selector. All the window switches are in the middle, as was the norm for Mercedes back in the 1980s. Same with the hazard switch right here, which does work, so I certainly can't complain. Uh, this, though, which is like the um, radio, uh, like, tuner or it's not it's not a tuner i can't remember exactly what it is um i took this entire wood piece off because some of my windows were not working or they were working intermittently so uh, i switched off uh the window switches with some spare ones my, my dad had collected from the junkyard years ago and um took this off this has never been plugged in or it was, I'm sure, plugged in from new, but this looks like a dealer installed radio to me from what I can tell, at least. Not exactly sure, though, I will admit. Sadly, it's not a Blaupunkt. This car would have normally come uh, with a Blaupunkt, uh, but it's got a Sony radio in it. I'm going to rip this out and get like a Continental um, Bluetooth radio or something like that kind of thing, because I want my Bluetooth music because I'm sick of listening to the classical station. I love, I love the classical station. I got a lot of respect for y'all. Sometimes, though, I just don't want to listen to classical music. When I do want to listen to classical music, I'll listen to y'all at the classical station kind of thing, but sometimes I just don't want to. Sometimes I just don't want to. So I do want to rip this out and get myself a Bluetooth radio. But as we can see, none of the wood is super cracked. That's a pretty common thing for W123s. The wood is typically pretty cracked. Well, you can see, I'm mean, like right here, the wood is a little bit cracked kind of thing, but it's not terrible by any means kind of thing. It's not terrible by any means. So I really cannot complain that is for sure. Sadly, the cigarette lighter does not work. Have not gotten it to work yet, but um. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the interior now. So I do suppose now I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood. Oh, we can see the uh, lights, uh, parking brake and parking brake right there. But now I do suppose I should probably go ahead and pop the hood, show you guys what's under the hood. And uh, then after that, I'm going to go ahead and start up the car. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead, take for a drive, I do think. Because I've been needing to do that, you know what I'm saying? I've been needing to do that. I've got a circuit planned out. So there we go. This is just how you open it. You just pull this out from right here. And you just kind of lift it up while, while pulling it out. It needs to be... Okay, I'm going to have to... I'm, this, this, it usually is done with two hands. I'm trying to do it with one hand right now because I'm holding the camera. Let's see if I can do this. Kinda wiggle it. Wiggle it. There we go. All righty. And there we go, y'all. There is the OM617 turbo diesel engine that is powering this car. It's a three liter, five cylinder turbo diesel engine. And um, it's in pretty good shape kind of thing. It's not super clean by any means kind of thing. We can see some like minor oil leak right here. No biggie, you know what I'm saying? Uh, here's the stop button. So if, um, so one of the um, issues that W123s have a lot of times is um so the the windows and the uh, transmission shifts all through the, the windows open and close and the transmission shifts all through a vacuum system it's the same system that also operates the door locks so if at any point in the system you have a hole in the vacuum line it can all of a sudden cause a bunch of issues i mean like once you patch up that hole and everything like that kind of thing you're all good but with these getting older and with those lines deteriorating um issues do start to do, do start to happen and everything like that kind of thing like my door locks no longer work kind of thing i have to do each one of them manually uh, they no longer open all at the same time like they're really supposed to uh, my windows work thankfully um, but one of the issues that can happen is that the uh car when the, the shut off when you just turn the key to the off position the engine won't actually turn off though uh, that's one of the issues that can happen when you have a busted vacuum line with a w123 and so as such if you have that issue you just need to push this button right here to stop the engine just hold it down until the engine stops and you're all good to go kind of thing but um yeah no it's got some newer parts uh, that is for sure looking into down here the turbo is right around this area below all of this sort of stuff i want to say if i'm remembering correctly uh, here is the uh, air filter the air filter mounts are currently absolutely um trashed i have new mounts at home that i need to put on um but it's currently trashed so i'm just kind of letting it dangle right now i will admit this is the actual engine block itself has mercedes on the end very nice that is for sure does not have a plastic cover which i which is much appreciated um, there are some new parts the alternator i can't remember where the alternator is i will admit um the alternator when i bought it when it was when i bought it originally at least looked pretty new i don't i don't know if it does anymore i can't remember but um yeah no overall looks pretty good if i do say so myself certainly 
no complaints on my behalf. Uh, we can see one of the tubes kind of going from the hood right here all the way down. Uh, that's the uh, tube to the um, window, wa w w window? window uh, washer right here. It, it broke. I need to fix that as well, but that's a very minor thing. I'm really not worried about it in all honesty. But, you know, looks pretty good to me. Not super dirty. Definitely not clean, though, either. I've never cleaned this, uh, this engine bay. But I'm pretty sure the previous owner did clean this engine bay as it was a lot cleaner when I first bought it. But I do suppose without further ado, I should probably go and get this all started. Tractor battery right here. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. Let's go ahead and though. Let's go ahead though and uh, get this car all started up so y'all can actually hear the uh, OM617 turbo diesel. Let's give it some gas. And then after that, I'm going to go for a drive. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to go ahead and start this car up. Start my car up, to be precise. It does kind of make some noises because my uh, my uh, my seatbelt is not on. Let's go ahead. Start it up immediately. Sometimes I need to give it some gas. Sometimes I don't. And we can just hear it. It is just purring, y'all. It is just purring. Man, oh, man. Oh, man. Sounds so good, y'all. Sounds like a sewing machine. I love it. I love it. Let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the exhaust. We can see, of course, the exhaust stuff is coming out. Yep, stuff is coming out. That is for sure. Definitely a little bit of a, a low rumble coming from the exhaust. That is for sure. But the main sound coming from this car is uh, most definitely from the engine itself. And honestly, half the time while I'm driving this car, I don't even want to listen to the radio just because I love the sound of the engine so damn much. That's just that's just how much I love the engine. I'm like, yeah, I don't even want to listen to music. I'll just listen to the engine kind of thing. That's, uh, that's how much I like the sound, of the sound of this engine. Sounds like a well-oiled uh, sewing machine, something like that kind of thing. Sounds fantastic. I love the sound of this engine. Now that we've taken a look at the engine bay, though, and uh, listen to how the engine sounds for just a little bit. Let's go ahead and now, I do suppose get the hood all closed up and uh, take this car for a drive. I think that's the only thing I have left to do. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's just go and close this up just real quick. Just make sure I have my keys on my keys. I was like, I need to make sure I have my keys. I, want, I don't want to lock my keys in the engine bay. My keys are in the ignition, I can't believe you. Let's go ahead and close this up. Make sure it's all closed and everything like that kind of thing. All closed. And let's go ahead. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove the little rag I have covering my license plate. Not letting y'all see my license plate. Nope. Not happening. Just going to just throw that in my car just like that kind of thing. And let's go ahead now and take my wallet out of my pocket. Put it in the uh, door. Let's go move my chung was as well. Move my chung was over just a little bit kind of thing. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and take my phone out of my tripod I'm using at the moment. And I am going to go ahead and put it in this holder right here. And I'm going to end the video and then I'll be back in just a moment, y'all. So see y'all in just a moment. That, that was that was horrible. <laughs> that was not good. All right, y'all. There we go. I am back. It's been a total of one second. I ain't gonna lie. It's been a total of one second. I do think I'm all ready to go ahead and take my car for a drive. So let's go ahead and do just that. Let's go ahead and do just that. Let's go ahead and take my 1985 Mercedes-Benz W123 300D turbo diesel sedan with the OM617 under the hood in classical white with the uh, Palmetto MB Tex interior for a drive. And let's go ahead and see how it is. Of course, all of the windows, let's just go ahead and roll it up real quick. All of the windows work, certainly no complaints on my behalf. And let's just go ahead and prove that the sun work, sunroof works as well. Sunroof opening right up, just like that. I do think I'm gonna leave it closed just for, actually, maybe I'll leave it open. Yeah, you know what? I'll leave it open today. It's a nice day, you know what I'm saying? It's like 80 degrees out here right now. I, I certainly can't complain. The back interiors, though, though. Oh, <laughs> of course, that happens on video. The back interiors, though, the back interiors, the back windows, though, um, intermittently work. It's not working right now. They'll go down. Oh, now it's working again. Now it's working again. They're, they're kind of dying. They're kind of dying. I definitely need to figure out what the issue with that is. Um, it was one of the switches, and now I'm thinking the, the regulator, the window regulator is dying, but it is what it is kind of thing. It's very minor, especially with it getting colder now. 
I don't got the windows down all that much anyway kind of thing. But without further ado, let's go ahead and go for a ride, y'all. Let's go and go for a ride. And uh, also, let's get some music going. I should probably turn that off before the video gets copyrighted, though. But, you know, the, the radio does work. Alrighty, though, y'all. Handbrake off. Let's go and go for a ride, y'all. I'm gonna go and turn my lights on. It is currently 5.08. I don't... No, I don't need my lights on. What am I doing? Oh, 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 oh. Actually, there's no cars coming. I really don't want to get hit. Let me tell you what. I have never been more aware of retarded drivers than I am in this car. Uh, because I really, really, really do not want to get hit in this car. I love this car so much, I really don't want to get hit. So I've never been more aware of retarded drivers than I have in this car right here. But I'm just going to go up, I'm going to take a right, and then I'm going to take a right at the next light, and then I'm just going to go kind of up and around, and loop back through uh, to uh, where I was just parked, I'm thinking. Uh, let's, uh, I guess when I'm uh, pulling out of here, I'll go ahead and just show off the interior. The, uh, the interior? Not the interior the acceleration to you guys real quick. Um, actually, I probably shouldn't do that right off the bat because there's a train tracks coming up. Train tracks are coming up in just a minute, but it's riding very smooth, riding very smooth. The, the ride in this car is very, very, very smooth. Although it is, if you're not sitting in a seat, it's a blind corner, I hate this. I really, I'm going for it. Um, if you're not sitting in the seat, I'm sure, I don't know how well the, the stabilization for my phone is doing um, right now, but uh, everything in this car rattles. Everything in this car rattles, but it doesn't make a noise when it's rattling. It just kind of rattles, just because the, the, the engine just rattles so much kind of thing. It's a very rattly engine, uh, and so everything in the interior rattles. Uh, my water r rattles, my seat rattles, everything rattles kind of thing, but nothing really makes a noise, which is really nice. Like, I've had cars that don't rattle very much, but when they do rattle, the noise is terrible. This car, on the other hand, it rattles, but it never makes a noise, and I love that. And it just feels when you're driving it like it's just so high quality. You're just driving this car and you're just like kind of chilling. You're not in a rush to go anywhere kind of thing. You're just kind of chilling. And it's just absolutely fantastic. I ain't gonna lie to you. Waiting to go, waiting to go. Come on. I want to go and test the acceleration for y'all. All right, this guy going up. Oh, okay. Now there's a pedestrian. All right, I'm going now. It's not foot to the floor. It's not foot to floor, but um, not doing bad. Not doing bad. I had to get away from that guy who's playing copyrighted music. You can't let this video get copyrighted. I'm trying to go for a fully monetizable video today. That's why I'm not smoking. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're up to 45 right now. Oh, do 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 do. Hey, he's edging forward, but I'm coming towards him. I swear to God, I, I'm i so aware of everybody in this car. I really do not want to get hit. I'm literally like, whoa, what the hell are you doing, dude? Like half the time kind of thing. Let's just go and edge it up to, uh, there we go. Just almost full throttle now. Just getting it up to, making sure I'm not driving by a cop or anything. Getting it up to 55. That's the plan at the moment. Up to 55. This is a 40 mile, no, no I'm not going to say the speed limit through here. Not gonna say the speed limit, and that's 50. And it's very smooth, very, very, very smooth. This is a very, very, very slow car. I don't know what the zero to 60 was on this car when it was new. And this car, I'd have to say it's probably like a solid nine and a half to 10 seconds zero to 60 right now though. And if I'm going down a down ramp, um, going onto the highway, it's it's pretty quick. Um, going up a hill, up an up ramp onto the highway, it's like I'm merging at 55 kind of thing. Um, it is a slow car, and I was considering getting a 240D, which is a smaller engine with no turbo, um, because I saw another really nice 240D, and I'm so glad I didn't get it, just because 240Ds have like 75 horsepower. Um, this has 50 more horsepower, and it's still really, really, really slow, because this car weighs like over 3,000 pounds, um, which is not super heavy by today's standards, I will admit, but for 125 horsepower uh, diesel engine with not even all that much torque for a diesel, um, it's not very fast, but it's a very, very, very smooth engine. The transmission is very smooth shifting. It really does feel like quality, to be completely honest with you. It's just very, very, very smooth, very, very, very luxury, very, very, very comfortable place to be, super comfortable place to be. And 
you do not feel like when you're driving this car, you do not feel rushed at all kind of thing. Um, you just kind of feel like you're chilling. Like when I was going 55 back there, I was like, I really don't need to go 55. Like when I was driving my Camry that I had before this car, because I had a Camry before this car. I had a 99 Camry. I had to junk it because it had some structural issues and whatnot. It wasn't worth fixing. I uh, got this car as a replacement for the Camry. But when I was in my Camry, I just, frankly put, I mean, like, I, I, I wouldn't speed everywhere, but I'm like, let me tell you what, I'd speed everywhere kind of thing. Just because I was just like, it's, it's just like, I got places to be kind of thing. Uh, with this car on the other hand, I'm going 45 everywhere. I'm going 45 everywhere, and I don't care what everybody behind me has to say about it. Um, no, 45 everywhere. I'm going the speed limit everywhere, and I don't care what everybody behind me has to say about it kind of thing. Um, I even go the speed limit through school zones now during school hours. Can y'all believe that? That's crazy. Nobody does that. But I just feel so not rushed with this car that why not go slow kind of thing? Why not go slow? And I'm getting a call right now, but you know, I can't be, I can't be calling and driving. So I'm not going to answer it. Plus I'm on video right now, but, um, yeah, no, shifting very, very, very smooth. Some of the minor things with the transmission in this car, it's shifting a little bit rougher than it would normally if it was completely full of transmission fluid. It's been about a month since I last filled up the transmission with transmission fluid. It's got a very slow leak. About every two months, I need to fill it up with transmission fluid. So it's about half empty now. Shifts a little bit rougher than it does when it's um, completely like topped off and where it's meant to be and everything like that kind of thing. Um, but one of the thing that's, thing is, things that is normal with this car, um, even if, even if, um, and I think I'll be able to demonstrate it coming up here, is that if you're going down a hill and it wants to up or down shift, it makes a very loud clunk and it's very, very, very clunky. So let's see if I can go and demonstrate that real quick. So just give it a little bit of gas and then just let off. Okay, it didn't clunk, but when you're going down a hill, it tends to like to clunk. Um, it's just one of the quirks of this car and all honestly one of the quirks and features you got a clunk when you're going down a hill it's nothing bad all of them do it um but they do clunk they do clunk going down hills just because i guess the transmission fluid is just weighted one way or something i'm not sure in all honesty um you know ride quality wise the ride is very 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 smooth um you can still feel all of the bumps in the road this is by no means the smoothest ride i've ever had i've driven a lexus ls 430 before that thing feels like you're floating on a pillow this car, on the other hand, when compared to the LS430 Lexus, um, feels much more grounded. It doesn't quite feel like you're driving on a pillow, but you're most certainly not driving a sports car either. Um, you can still feel all of the bumps in the road, which is actually something I really like, but it's not at all something that is uncomfortable because, of so, because you can feel just every bump in the road and it just sends a shattering feeling down your spine and everything like that. Like I've got a, I've got a Chevy Suburban, a square body Suburban, um, from 1990 as well. And the, the, the suspension of that is either really good or really bad, depending on what surface you're on. And a lot of times it can be very uncomfortable kind of thing, which I mean, like it's a truck, that's kind of what you expect. This is by no means a 1990 Chevy Suburban to say the least. Um, and I just realized I missed my turn. Uh, oh, well, I'll just uh, go up here and, come on, man, get on your side of the road, please. God damn, Jesus Christ. Got to be using my turn signals. Of course, of course, one of my uh, my left turn signal does stick as well, but my right one doesn't, which is very nice. Got a speed bump coming up ahead. Slow down all the way. Let's get some gas. That was up to 30. <laughs> that was just 30 right there. That was just 30 right there. This car is slow, but I love it. I love it. As said though, very, very, very comfortable, yet very grounded ride. It does not quite feel like you're riding on a pillow per se. Another speed bump. And um, very slow, but very smooth shifting, very even. Like, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to uh, driving this car, um, just simply because kind of when you put your foot down, kind of takes a couple seconds for the car to be like, oh, you really want to go? Okay, well, you know, I'll let you go then, kind of thing. It takes did not need to cut that corner as much as he did. Um, kind of takes a moment for the car to be like, oh, you actually want to go kind of thing. But once you get used to it, you get used to it. Not very much gotten used to it. But um, yeah, we're almost back where we were. Um, so let's go ahead and 
I'm not going to take off my seatbelt while I'm driving on video. That's illegal. I can't do that. What I normally do that, maybe, maybe, but I'm, I can't do that here. I can't do that here kind of thing. I'll go around this person walking the dog as well. We ball, you know what I'm saying? Is a little bit sticky as well. I gotta like figure out how to unstick my steep belt, but it's just old car stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know, as a whole, the ride quality is very, 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 it's very comfy. Not the most comfy I've ever had, but I mean, like, it's very comfy and grounded, and the seats are very comfortable as well, kind of thing. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention the cruise control does not work properly on this car. Um, I need to figure out how to get that to work because for long journeys, having no cruise control hurts my leg, I will admit. But, but ride quality wise, fantastic you know what i'm saying i really got no complaints on my behalf um acceleration wise i mean like it's slow but it can get out of its own way kind of thing i mean like up to zero to 30 is is nothing terrible but it's just not really super respectable by uh car uh speed ratings these days but every car is so fast these days in the in the 80s this was slow too but it wasn't as slow as it is today a kia soul can outrun this car let me just put it that way kind of thing um transmission smooth uh, transmission shifting wise very 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 smooth seats are very comfortable um all my gauges work that's another thing i forgot to mention well my clock doesn't work but all of my other gauges work which is nice intermittently to be precise they all work intermittently specifically my rpm gauge only works like half the time but all the other ones work mostly my fuel gauge says i'm empty when i'm at halfway full but now that i know that it's no biggie but um yeah i love my car y'all I love my car. I am a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. Let's just go ahead and step outside real quick. And uh, I think that's all I had to say. I think that's all I had to say. This has been my full tour of my, well, of my 1985 diesel Mercedes. This has been my full tour and driving experience. I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. It's been a lot of fun to make, been a lot of fun to uh, kind of just uh, go down memory lane with y'all, talk about why I, uh, why this is actually one of my dream cars and everything like that kind of thing, and talk about just, well, one of my favorite cars as a whole with y'all in today's video. It's been a lot of fun, that is for sure. I love this car. It's so sick, and uh, I'm planning on taking it to a million miles. Let me tell y'all what. Plan on taking it to a million miles. But I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video where I gave you all a full tour of my uh, dream car right here, and I also drove it just a little bit. If you guys have enjoyed watching this video, of course, please make sure to well, like and subscribe for more content. I have my uh, Instagram, my book, my merch, my P.O. Box, and my uh, second channel all in the description down below. Go check it all out. And of course, please make sure to let me know what you guys think of this car in the comments down below. If there's anything you guys think I should do to it in the future, let me know in the comments down below. Warning, even if you guys do comment stuff with suggestions saying what I should do, like modification-wise to it, likelihood is I'm probably just going to leave it stock because I kind of just like the stock look on this car. And I'm just going to be doing repairs and stuff like that kind of thing. I'm not planning on really lowering this car. I'm not planning on lifting it. Well, you know what? Actually, actually get getting some like mm, kind of muddy-ish tires like, uh, that can fit without without modifications, that would actually be kind of sick. I actually really like the look of like more more dirt style tires or like off-road style tires on w 12 I actually love that. So maybe maybe I'll do that, but that's not really a modification. That's just, new to, that's just new tires. And that'll happen whenever these tires are worn out and they're pretty much brand new. Uh, the, like the previous owner put them on they've got like i don't know like seven thousand miles on them or something like that kind of thing brand new tires i certainly can't complain that is for sure but um yeah what was i about to say what was i about to say i can't remember um yeah i certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video though if you guys have enjoyed watching this video of course please make sure to well, like and subscribe for more content you got uh everything in the description down below go check it all out and uh let me know what you guys think of my car in the comments down below so the next one y'all stay safe and peace and have a great one yes sir yes sir you know what i'm saying i'm saying